Now do you want me? Don't be fake If you had a nerve to try to play me like you're real I'm trying to eat on the plate Baby, please, peace, be still Thou shalt not kill me in the belly of the beast Now do you want me? Don't be fake If you had a nerve to try to play me like you're real I'm trying to eat on the plate Baby, please, peace, be still Yo, what up, people? It's your boy, The Laugh King Coming at you with another NBA podcast video and you know i just want to talk about you know lebron james claiming that he's the goat you know he's better than kobe he's better than uh kareem he's better than uh bill russell he's better than anybody michael jordan everybody that came before him and as somebody who has been watching the NBA for a very long time, since the 90s, basically. Um, you know, I don't get that. Like, I don't get why a player would come out and say, I'm the GOAT. Like, even in, uh, even in hockey, like, everyone calls Wayne Gretzky the great one, but it's not because they think he's the best hockey player to ever step foot on the ice right they call Gordy Howe the greatest ever too Gordy Howe is like he's a legend in hockey right not just NHL but hockey same thing with Bobby Orr same thing with Mario Lemieux there's so many great players that um that played the game of hockey there's so many great players that played the game of basketball and, you know, for LeBron James to come out and say, I'm the GOAT. Like, that's just, that's just arrogance. To me, that's arrogance because, number one, like, I'm a Pacer fan. So, my teams have had a lot of battles with LeBron in the Eastern Conference. And a lot of the stuff that he's done in those series... And one of the one of the things that he did that really pissed me off that year was when he undercut uh, Danny Granger in the playoffs because Danny Granger was getting in his face. He wasn't going to be intimidated by LeBron James at all, and LeBron got pissed off. And when Granger went to shoot a jump shot, he undercut uh, Granger, and Granger hurt his ankle. And I don't, I don't even remember. I don't think he even played the rest of that series. So. That's the kind of stuff that LeBron has to do to win. And also, LeBron was also doing a lot of flopping, uh, especially in his Miami days. Like, that whole Miami team was flopping just to win. So if you're such a great player and, you know, you feel that you're the GOAT, why do you have to result in, in those tactics, like why? Like you, great players don't have to do that stuff. And I'm not taking away the fact that he's a talented player because, you know, we've all, this generation, we've all watched LeBron grow up from 18 year old, 18 years old in the NBA, to where he is now, and he's definitely gotten better. Because I felt like earlier in his career, while he was a good player, he just had no killer instinct. Like he wasn't a killer. He wasn't like Kobe. He wasn't like Michael. He didn't have that killer instinct. So most of the time, he would be passing the ball to other teammates and letting them, you know, try to score the last bucket or whatever. Like, he wouldn't try to take over games in certain situations. There's been times where he has or whatever, but, you know, he literally left a 65-win team to go play with three superstars. And uh, Kevin Durant gets a lot of uh, hate because he went to go play with the Warriors. But like I keep saying about Kevin Durant, he was linked to the Warriors before they even won 73 games. Before they even won 73 games. So that was going to come down to it anyway. Right? Like he was going to leave Russell Westbrook anyway because you can tell that those two didn't like each other. Right? They had a lot of on-court issues that, you know, that to me wasn't fixable. So that's why he wanted to leave. And OKC, they ended up getting Paul George. And Paul George is more of a sec. He, he doesn't mind playing second fiddle. And he's such a great player when he has somebody else that, that's really the alpha dog. 
and now he's balling out. Both of those guys are balling out in OKC. Kevin Durant won his championships in Golden State. You know, he just, that's just the way it is, man. But getting back to the whole LeBron thing, it's like, you know, when he got exposed by the Mavericks uh, in the finals that one year, like, you can tell he did not have a complete game. Because there's no way you have a complete game and teams are letting you shoot mid-range jump shots and you can't even make those jump shots, right? Like, he got exposed, right? And they put Rick Carlisle, who's like a genius coach, he put J.J. Barea on, on, uh, on LeBron, and I was just like, man, this guy really has no killer instinct, man. Like, he's, like, ever since then, man, like, he, he just got, like, he was getting scrutinized. He was getting everything. But ever since then, like, his game has elevated over the years. So he's definitely gotten better as a player. But to say that you're the GOAT because, you know, you ended the 52-year drought in Cleveland – like you should feel some type of way for doing that but you know there's a lot of arrogance that LeBron has that nobody likes to talk about like especially that one time where you know he's a veteran and he was sizing up uh Frank N- Nidakina like he was he was sizing them up like he was sizing up a rookie and Ernest Kanner had to come in and you know defend his boy like what kind of veteran guy you know wants to size up a rookie and you're supposed to be the GOAT. Like just kill him out there on the floor, man. If he gets if you get if he's guarding you out there, you know, make him punish punish him. Right? Don't size him up and act like you that you just, you know, larger than life figure because, you know, you have a rookie on you. Like, come on man. That's some sucker shit. And it's like the more LeBron opens his mouth, it's like the more I feel that, you know, he's... A lot of the stuff that he says is just for show, right? Like, they're saying he's the most influential athlete. I just don't see it, right? What, because he called Trump a bum? He's the most influential athlete? No. He has his show to HBO, which uh, on HBO, which I like. And he was talking about how Adam Silver... You know, gives them more leeway and stuff. Adam Silver does not give them more leeway. Adam Silver just under, understands that the NBA players need a platform and they don't want the same issues as the, what the NFL has. Because remember, the NBA implemented that uh, um, that national anthem rule long time ago, long before the NFL did it. So it's whatever, man. And he was saying, in the way LeBron was even. Um, talking about the um the way lebron was talking about how adam silver gives him leeway it's like he was choosing his words carefully but he wasn't really confident in what he was saying about it either so i don't know like sometimes you got to listen to these athletes to see where their head is at and to me like it didn't sound convincing that adam silver is giving the players that much leeway Right, like they, like he, he as a league understands his demographics. He understands that a lot of people look up to the NBA players, so he gives them somewhat a little leeway. But those guys have to play by rules too. If you don't think so, then you're just on Twitter believing everything those guys say, and you know it's it's all a facade. Because the minute you start questioning the referees and stuff like that, he's taking twenty five thousand dollars out of your pocket. Right, so I don't know. I always thought LeBron was a great player, but to me, like the reason why I rank Kobe ahead of LeBron is because number one, I don't really find LeBron exciting to watch. Like, I I hated the Lakers back in the day. Like, I I wasn't really a Laker hater like some of these guys, but I never really liked the Lakers. Like, I I always watched the bat. I always watched um basketball and stuff like that uh but there wasn't really any hate towards them but i just never really paid attention to the lakers right because i was a pacer fan i'm on the east coast i live in toronto so i was actually sitting there watching um a lot of raptors games and stuff like that but the reason why 
I felt Kobe was Kobe is a better player or more exciting player than LeBron James is because you know Kobe was on the West Coast Laker games on the East Coast don't start till 10:30. 06 Kobe had me staying up till one o'clock watching every single one of those games and to me, it's like that guy made the league so exciting at the time, even though he was going through his situation, like everybody was staying up and watching Kobe Bryant just straight torching teams. Like that was one of the best years of the NBA. And, you know, it ended, so it ended kind of dumb because, you know, they could have easily beat the Suns in that playoff series. But, um... Yeah, man, like, Kobe, man, he he was just straight killing teams. Like, i would never seen anything like that. I remember watching the 81-point game against the Raptors, and, like, literally this guy wasn't missing a shot. And I'm just like, man, this is going to be a crazy night. And then the Raptors ended up being up double digits, and then this guy pretty much wheeled his team back from double digits and won by double digits. And dropped 81 on the Raptors. Like, there's not another player in the NBA, to me, that has ever caught my attention like that. Right? Like, LeBron was a good player. Like, I, I watched a lot of LeBron games in the East. And I just never really cared, you know, to see him play. Like, he was, he was, a, he, he gets his stats and stuff like that. But, like, as far as excitement, like, I just don't get that same feeling like like the how I was getting when I was watching LeBron you know Kobe was doing this thing and you know he of course he had his issues everybody saw the games with Shaq uh you know the 2000 finals I didn't watch a lot of those games because I was in the states and we didn't really have cable so I really missed a lot of those games when the Pacers were in the finals and you know just to see how my Pacers you know we didn't back down from that super team. You know, it made me it made me proud to be a Pacer fan. And, um, you know, you recognize that Kobe and Shaq were a, a pretty much unstoppable force, right? So, I don't know. I, maybe I'm getting off topic. But I just feel that, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to call yourself the GOAT, like, it can't be just off of one playoff series, man. Because a lot of people can call themselves the GOAT off one playoff series. Roy Hibbert can call himself the GOAT off one playoff series because he had that crazy series, uh, that crazy playoff series against the Knicks. And, man, that was one of the best times to be a Pacer fan because, you know, we finally made the conference finals and stuff like that after so many years. And we were just straight beast in the Knicks, man. Like, that series was amazing, man. And that's the thing about Indiana. Like, they've been involved in a lot of classic playoff series. And they don't get, like, they don't get the hype, man. Right? But like I said, a lot of the playoff series that we've had against LeBron James, uh, LeBron James really literally had to play out of his mind just to beat the Pacers. Right? So... That's where I give him the props because regardless of who you have on him, like, he's going to get his, right? Because he's that good of a player. But as far as, like, you know, sitting down to watch LeBron James, you know, try to give me some excitement while watching basketball, I just never got that excitement from watching him play. And this, like I said, this podcast is just, like, a personal thing for me. Um, of course, a lot of people feel would feel different about it, but... For me personally, like, the way Kobe Bryant took, took over those games, the way Michael Jordan put fear every time he stepped on the court into his opponent, like, to me, I don't think LeBron ever had that in him until, I would say, when he came back, um, maybe I'll say in Cle- when he was in Miami, but when he came back to Cleveland... I felt that's when LeBron, that's when we, we were going to get the special LeBron James. Because, you know, he came back, you know, he built his, his squad over there in Cleveland. And he, 
he pretty much turned into like a Kobe type player. Like he was still playing his 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 past first game or whatever. He was still getting his numbers, but this was a different LeBron. And I think that's when LeBron James became the real LeBron James. Like he's always had great games and stuff like that, but when he went back to Cleveland, it was like it was like I knew there was gonna be a special LeBron James uh, right there. So, but to call himself the goat when there's so many great players out there, like that I feel that brought more to the game than him, made their teammates better more than him. I don't know. I, j I just can't agree with it, man. Because, like I said, man, it's so many great players before him. And you, you really have to sit down and analyze a whole body of work uh, before saying such things. So, like I said, he was probably feeling himself when he said it, but he said it more than once. He was like, I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT. And the whole NBA, like, all the, the ex-players, they're, like, looking at him like, are you stupid? Like, a lot of people, even on Twitter, like, people that have wa been watching basketball since the 80s, they don't even agree with him either, right? So we're in a time where LeBron James can say whatever he wants and, like, nobody questions him, right? He's the GOAT. He has people in the media just talking about him 24-7 because I don't know if they're on the payroll or whatever, but that's all they talk about, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. And that's why I'm so happy he left the East because literally everybody in the East got tired of it. There's Miami, Miami Heat fans that love him for bringing the championship to Miami, but they just can't stand him now, right? Because they see the bullshit. They see all of it, so... I don't know. I didn't want to talk for this long. But I feel like if you're going to be the GOAT, like, you know, you got to... You know what the NBA should do? When LeBron retires, I don't know if they should do it if he reti after he retires because who knows what that will be. But what I think they should do is get every single great player that's alive in the NBA and have, like, a big panel and talk about experiences and I want to see if LeBron's going to be that arrogant in that situation. Because when you're around your friends and you're around, you know, your, your personal outlets, you can say whatever you want. But in that type of setting where you have KG, where you have uh, Oscar Robertson, so if you have a lot of great players surrounding LeBron in a big, big press conference type scenario, uh, not press conference, but a big panel. I want to see LeBron try to talk his shit in front of all those players. Like I want to, I want to see what they would say to him right there. Cause you know KG is gonna say something. You know Paul Pierce is gonna say something. You know all these great players are gonna sit there. It's good. It would be a crazy idea for the NBA to do that, right? Just to shut a lot of the stuff that's going on in today's media down. Like, I want to see that. I want to see that. Like, as a basketball fan, a guy who's been watching basketball since the 90s, grew, grew up a Pacer fan, I want to see all these great players, not just on TNT or ESPN. I want to see every single great player. I want to see the NBA put this thing together. And you have all these great players. Michael Jordan better be there, too. And... I just want to. I just want to see who's gonna say what. I just want to see who's gonna say what in that in that scenario, right? No friends, just competitors, right? I want to see that. Anyways, I don't know if I got to everything I wanted to say. I'm definitely. I've definitely been talking way longer than expected, but um, I just had to talk about it, man, because like I said, man. There's a lot about this subject that gets swept under the rug. And as basketball fans, you know, we have to hold people accountable. We can't just be fanboys and fangirls and, you know, all that stuff. Like, everything has to have, you know, weight to it. I'm going to leave it at that. 
What do you guys think about the recent uh, comments of LeBron James? Who do you think the real GOAT is? Everyone says Michael Jordan. Everyone says Bill Russell. Everyone says Kareem. Who do you think the GOAT is? My GOAT, Reggie Miller. Because he don't back down from nobody. Nobody. I'm out of here. Peace. I got a confession. I possess the God particle. Lock me up for possession. The relationship with God should be great for proper protection. If I am the show and prove, ain't no need to ask me no question. The segregation real, you should probably stay in your section.